Hi, I'm Jim. My job is to follow Lori around. <laughs> Hi everyone, it's Lori with Behavior Education at Spirit Keeper Equine Sanctuary. Welcome to Serpente Sunday. Today is Sunday, April 25th, 2021. I am in a behavior conference all weekend. So April and May are very busy months for me. It seems that every professional conference that's going this year is either in the spring or fall and I have a bunch going on right now. So I'm on a lunch break and I have 31 minutes and 25 seconds left. So what I'm gonna do for Serpente Sunday this weekend is another vlog. I don't do vlogs. I've only done one other vlog but it's a good time to do a vlog when I'm in a situation like this where I'm very busy and I'm just going to show you a little glimpse of my day. Now you can see over here that Rodney is coming out of her enclosure. She um, can climb around on this stand when I'm in my conference, but I have to watch her because as you can see, she likes to cruise around to places where she shouldn't be, like behind the enclosures. And so that is an off-limits area for her. And so what I'll just do is bring her along with us while we do our animal checks. And so that's what I would normally be doing on my lunch hour right now is getting a quick bite to eat. I've already fed the dogs and brought them in. And so then I'm going to walk around and check all of the snakes and see what they're up to. Now, Rodney wants to go behind these enclosures. So she comes out of her enclosure here and onto this activity stand. And then what she likes to do is get behind these showcase enclosures. And there's a tunnel in here that is created by the indentation for the lamps. And the snakes love to crawl in there. And I'm fine with the Brettles pythons and some of the other pythons climbing in there, but Rodney, is just too quick and she can't be trusted without me keeping my eye on her every second. So she's gonna come along with us while we walk. I guess we'll just start here. Uh, these are all Brettles pythons that are on and around my desk. And since it is during the day, they're all resting. So this is Ronan, he's the one that's out all the time. Um, you can probably see this one though, back here in the corner, and that's Bindu. And he's only been out here about a month. He cleared quarantine and um, he generally doesn't hide at all during the day. He likes to bask on top of that shelf. So then we're gonna check all of these animals here. These are all Brettles pythons and they're all in five foot by two foot by two foot black box cages enclosures. And this one up here, John Shepherd, you can see that he's out. And it's interesting because he, is a baby he's not even a year old yet and his original enclosure is over here in the corner it's a 12 by 12 by 18 inch exoterra which i moved into here and just opened the door to allow him a gradual transition into this larger space usually during the day i find him somewhere over in his home base area resting today he's out in the open and this is actually where he usually is at night but last night, he got a big adventure. He got to come out of his enclosure. He got to explore around one of our activity stations. He actually did not want to go back in. And so I find it very interesting that after all that, now he, um, instead of in his little home base area, he's out here in the open, um, I guess, in case I open the door for him again, because he really found it reinforcing to be out. So again, these Brettles pythons are normally not awake during the day and they're all in their elevated hides or in some other space to rest. These are my three biggest Brettles. They're right now in six by two by two enclosures. And again, they are all resting because it is daytime. These are two Brettles pythons and then a diamond python and they're all resting somewhere. They usually come out late in the day to bask. For some reason, it seems like they come out right before the lights are gonna go off and that's when they do a lot of their basking behavior. This is one of our California king snakes. He usually comes out in the evening and he ate last night, so he may not come out tonight. This is one of our younger Bradley. She's back there on a shelf. And then I have 
a hobnose snake here. You can see that she's resting under this log. And down here is a Lampropeltis alterna, which is a gray banded king snake, but she is hiding right now. So next we will check the snakes over here, which are two coastal carpet pythons and then another breadley. And the breadleys are the ones that normally you can still see even during the day. She's up there on her shelf resting. We have a corn snake up here and another Brettles python in this lower enclosure. But again, it's the time of day when they're normally sleeping. This is Celea. She's going into shed and normally she is out on one of these ledges. during the day, but I noticed yesterday she looked like she was going into blue. And when she goes into blue, she does typically use her hide. And then down here is a Brettles Python named Andromeda. And she's usually out here all the time on her shelf. Let's go to the back of the house. You can see all the dogs have eaten and now they're resting and digesting and they're being nice and quiet for me to do this vlog. So these are a lot of my colubrids. I've got corn snakes here. I have an Escalapian snake up here and another California king snake here and a gopher snake down here. The rest are all corn snakes. During the middle of the day, they are generally not out and about. Um, our false water cobra is out and about. This should be interesting since I'm holding Rodney. But you can see she's basking under both her halogen bulb and her UV, uh, UVB, and that's pretty common. And sometimes if I startle her when she's basking, she will jump into her swimming pool. And she looks very on alert. Look at that tongue. When they hood and hold their tongue out slowly like that, like stick the tongue out and hold it out for a long time, it means they're really investigating a scent. They have really good vision and they hunt visually and they respond to visual cues. And so I'm holding this bull snake and boy, her behavior is really interesting. She's really reacting to that. Whoa. Okay then. Her name is Vashti and she came from West Liberty University. She's here for a joint um, training project that I'm helping them with um, coaching one of their grad students who's actually working with a whole lot of these false water cobras. Over here are inland carpet pythons, and they're generally um, resting somewhere during the day. Oh, TC, I forgot you were out. Um, TC is out. He came out earlier today, and he roamed around the room for a while. And then he got into the scale, which is one of his favorite spots to sit. I don't know why. This is TC's enclosure. And uh, you can see that it's open because he wanted out earlier. And so he got to come out. Another Brettles python up here. Um, a younger Brettles python in here. Um, this enclosure, unfortunately, is empty. We lost Cifra on Wednesday to a sudden um, acute aortic aneurysm. And um, she was a three and a half year old Brettles python that upon necropsy, we found out had chronic heart disease. We also found out that she was actually a male. Um, so that's been really upsetting and I've only just barely started cleaning out her enclosure. Um, I have another Brettles Python up here, Brettles Python down here. In fact, this is Sifra's brother from the same clutch and you can see that he's up there on his ledge. I am concerned that if her heart condition was congenital or if it was heritable that her brother's could have something wrong with their heart. So I'm, I'm going to call Colorado State University tomorrow and see if there's a way that we can check their hearts and make sure that everything's okay. Um, we have two, well, a Brettles Python lives up here and a Inland Carpet Python lives down here and he's in his humid hide and he's got part of his head out of his humid hide. So most of the species I work with, other than the bull snake, really are awake in the evening and at night. And so I do see them during the day. I continue to do these walkthroughs and checks about every one to two hours, but I don't always see them out. 
because most of the species that I work with are active at night. And that's why I am up all night watching their behavior and journaling and logging things that are happening with them. And that's also when I usually feed them. So you don't see anybody in here awake or out. These are Poplin carpet pythons, Darwin carpet pythons, a jungle carpet python, and a couple of royal pythons in this room. Let me show you my calendar real quick, and it just illustrates how busy I am. So looking just at this week, on Monday, I coached one of my students with her snake training. Then I had a class at the University of Washington. Um, and then on Tuesday, I facilitated a live training discussion. I had homework for my own continuing education that was due on Wednesday. And then I had a class Wednesday night. I had to um, medicate our pot belly pig. She gets injections once a month and this week was the week. And then on Thursday, I had an applied ethology course that's every Thursday night, as well as I coached uh, the student at West Liberty University during the day. Um, Friday was actually a relatively free day for me. And so I got some things done around here with enclosures. And then yesterday and today, I'm in a power of choice workshop all day from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. my time. And that is just going over the neurobiology um, and the psychology of incorporating choice into our animal care and into our animal training and how that improves not only the lives of the animals to give them agency and to teach them that they have choice and control over their own behavioral outcomes, but it also facilitates training. Um, one of the projects that I did have this week, you see here in this hallway, um, our enclosures. This enclosure arrived for us to test out and it arrived broken. So it has to be returned. And then in the other box is a Zen Habitat. We've been very happy with Zen Habitats and we do have a couple of more that we need to put together. But before I can show you our quarantine room, I have to put Rodney up because Rodney cannot go in the quarantine room. We do have one snake in quarantine right now. So I'll just show you how we have that room set up. And that quarantine room is where we would put um, any snakes that are sick or we suspect of having anything that could be contagious to other animals. And then it's also the room where we quarantine new snakes that just arrive. And the normal quarantine period for us is a minimum of three months, unless something unusual comes up on a fecal check, on blood work, on any of our viral testing, or if I notice anything unusual with the snakes, general behavior, then they may be in quarantine for longer, but generally I do three months. Here's one of our Brettles pythons. This is her favorite spot. The showcase enclosures and the vision enclosures have a lip up here. It's kind of like a little ledge that the snakes can get into and onto, and they love that. And I love that about these enclosures because the snakes obviously really um, find something reinforcing about being up in that area. So I'm really pleased to be able to provide them some enclosures that have that. Not all of them do. These are our rainbow boas and you will not see them during the day at all. In fact, you usually won't even see them at night. They usually start coming out a lot more when they get hungry. And this is just a carrier that's in here. I brought our newest addition. Um, home in this carrier and you can see that it's large and so that gives you a clue that our new addition is an adult snake it's a five and a half year old royal python that's going to be part of our um, royals on the ranch series where we talk about royal python behavior and training and temperament so now we're entering the quarantine room so we've we've done this room last so this room isn't going to look like our other rooms. It's pretty sparse. And that's because it's for quarantine. And so again, if we have sick animals, they come in here and there's not a lot of stuff in here and everything is pretty barren. 
So we're able to keep them in a setting where I can monitor their health and their behavior and any um, urates, feces, um, regurgitation, just anything going on with them. And I have access to um, a large bathtub in here and sinks and a shower with a sprayer that I can detach. And so this is the room that we use for quarantine. And this is an air purifier. And unfortunately, we don't have a room with a separate air handling unit. And so the best that I can do is this sort of barren room with an air purifier, which our veterinarian recommended. And so this is an example of a quarantine tub. And the quarantine tub, I don't like to make completely barren, but you'll see that it's not as environmentally stimulating as a lot of the enclosures out there. So the animal does have access to UVB and a halogen bulb during the day. And then a heat mat is used at night. Um, there's plenty of ventilation in here. Um, there is a glass front, so the animal is able to look out and we're able to look in. And there's usually a water dish, something to climb on, some simple substrate, a humid hide. Um, and that's pretty much it that's in here right now. There's a regular plastic hide. And that is an adult male royal python under there. But it's during the day, he's asleep. He's chosen to be in that hide and I'm, I, I'm obviously not gonna force him out. Plus I wanna be able to wash up as simply as possible before I have to start my conference again. So he arrived here on April 21st and he'll be in here for three months. And so any handling that I do of him, any videos I make with him will be in here in the quarantine room and any training I do with him, all of that will have to be in here for three months. And he will obviously be the last animal that I work with after I've worked with others or if he's the first animal I work with, then I won't work with any others that day or I would completely shower and make sure that, that I'm sanitized and I change clothes before I handle any other animals. And that is just to prevent any potential disease transmission. He will be going into our veterinarian within the next week or two and he will be getting lab work done to test for any viral diseases. He'll have a fecal check done and he'll have just a general physical exam done so that um, that gives me a little more peace of mind. Well, everybody, thank you so much for watching. I know this is a little bit different style of video. I usually don't do vlogs. Um, probably only a few times a year will I do this kind of video, and it's usually going to be when I'm busy and in a conference or I'm inundated with teaching and, and classes and other things. Everybody, please remember to always be kind and love your animals. And I do have t-shirts available on Teespring and right now at customink.com that say that on the t-shirts. Always be kind and love your animals. And if you buy t-shirts, it actually supports all of the animals at Spirit Keeper Equine Sanctuary. The snakes, the horses, the dogs, the cats, uh, the pigs, and up until this week, our chicken. We not only lost a snake this week, we lost our chicken. And so it's been kind of a sad week.